Cube. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at the Hilton in Santa Clara. This is Silicon Angle and Wikibon's The Cube. This is Big Data Silicon Valley, or hashtag Big Data SV, a continuation of our our ge geographical coverage of big data. First, we were in Big Data NYC a few months ago around the Strata Conference when it was in New York. We were right across the street there. Here, it's the same thing. We're right across the street from the Strata Conference going on right behind us. A lot of news, a lot of developer action. Here was where the cube action is, where the entrepreneurs come, where the tech athletes come, where, where we extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And our next guest, Cube alumni, who won, was on, on last year's Strata 2013, uh, uh, Yadav, thank you for coming on again. Appreciate it. CEO of Info Objects. Uh, last year, your video was pretty popular. As we were just talking uh, uh, before we went on, was thousands of thousands of views. Um, a lot of people are interested in what you have to say. Yeah, uh, thanks, John and Dev, uh, for having me here again. Uh, I think what what I give is the honest opinion, and which is very <laughs> tough to find. Uh, I mean, even if I take any technology and I go on the search on the internet, and it's very tough for me to find the real stuff. Uh, Some call us the live thing. Quora, uh, <laughs> <laughs> except there's no Q&A, we just answer a pepper of questions. So let's get, we love, by the way, we love the straight scoop, that's our job. A lot of noise out there. This year, if you walk through Strata, we did uh, yesterday, uh, and you go to the exhibit hall, there's a lot of companies I've never heard of. Uh, more and more companies are popping out of the woodwork, kind of like mushrooms growing in the, in the mushroom patch. Um, but some are new, some won't be around. So a lot of noise. So I want to ask you first question is, we're kind of in the multi-generation of big data now. You know, a couple of years ago, you know, when it when really kind of got going, um, it, you knew it was only a handful of players. Now it's busting out, the big money involved, real solutions being talked about. What's the difference between the pretenders and the winners, in your opinion? So let's first start from the technology perspective in Hadoop. So what has happened is that uh, the HDFS, uh, that has really established itself. Uh, the biggest thing about HDFS is that in Hadoop that you can store uh, such a huge amount of data, petabytes of data, exabytes of data, uh, you can store in a very cost effective way. So that is not go going away anywhere. Uh, I would say for our lifetime it's not going away anywhere. What was happening was that MapReduce, that was doing a very small role, a very important role. And from there, now it's evolving. Now it's evolving into uh, all the real-time applications, the graph applications, and oh, the whole plethora of applications which are now you can do, because now you have all the data in one place, as uh, the pivotal guys are calling data lake, which, which is a nice terminology. So, yeah, so, so first you have, the first uh, was creating data lake. Uh, some folks call it data landfill, the people who don't like Hadoop that much. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so depending on where you're coming from, whether it's a data lake or a data landfill, right? So that is created now. So after that, what you do with it, right? And because you have all the data there, so you want to run all of your applications on that data, right? So what uh, companies were able to sell a couple of years back, that, okay, the data is in Hadoop, now you move the data out of Hadoop to MicroStrategy, and then they would run their analytics there. Down the line, uh, folks will say, CIOs will say, that's not making sense to us. Because now we have spent so much money in putting all the data in this data lake, and now we want to derive all the intelligence, all, all the insights from there itself. And that's where the market is going to evolve. Yarn has been a big factor there. So now with the Yarn, it has completely democratized the compute part of Hadoop. Now you can run any type of application on Hadoop. So it's been broadened the use cases, Yarn, right? I mean, yeah. explain that a little it has, bit. Yeah, yeah, it has made, made it unlimited. Yeah. Uh, so what's happened? So earlier, MapReduce, as I said, was a big use case of uh, Hadoop, and that made Hadoop very popular. But uh, that was only limited. You could only not every problem is uh, MapReducible, right? And there are all kind of uh, graph is uh, uh, one case, but there are all tons of applications which you want to run on uh, um, Hadoop where your data is. I mean, wherever you can put your data in a cost-effective way, say email applications, right? So now with Yarn, what's happening is, uh, number one, you can run any type of application uh, in Hadoop, uh, besides uh, the uh, usual MapReduce, which has been ported very well, uh, thanks to uh, all the uh, all the contributors and committers. Uh, I know most of them come from Cloudera and Hortonworks and all, and they have done an awesome job there, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, so, so, so that was the main thing. So now any type of application, you can move to Yarn. So. Yeah, so 
Great. Okay. So, um, so now we've got we've gone from from MapReduce. We broaden the applications. Where do you see this all going? I mean, now we're starting to hit. Everybody's saying that there's more suits this year at Strata than there are than there are hoodies. We've cr crossed that 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 point. Um, where do you see this going now that we're, uh, are you seeing real business applications? Are you seeing real dollars spent? What are your customers asking you to do and where do they want you to take them? So as I said last year that customers are sitting on the fence, they're still sitting on the fence but now less customers are sitting on the fence that they were uh, sitting on uh, the fence last year. And Yarn only came in October so it's just been a couple of months. Uh, with it, but you already see a lot of applications, the Storm and Spark and uh, Giraffe and tons of applications are now moving to, uh, already moving to Yarn, right? So so all these applications which were popular uh, independently, right, uh, the, the Twitter Storm, for example, was popular independently and now it's been ported to Hadoop. So earlier they were also ported to Hadoop, uh, but as a MapReduce application and which had a huge latency issue. Uh, MapReduce, uh, obviously, being a batch processing system, you, you cannot make it run much uh, faster beyond a certain limit, right? But now you can natively work on it. In fact, uh, there you see all these new real-time applications like Apache Trail and all. So what they are doing is they're actually going to the machine, the slave machine which has the data node, and they're actually drilling the hole there as the drill goes, right? And they're actually pulling the data from there, and then they're running their query engine there. So. OK, so talk a little bit about what you guys are doing at InfoObjects. Um, go to your website. Site. It's a great resource, first of all. Um, you have you. a lot of tutorials, sort of what this is all about. So what is InfoObjects all about? Yeah, so we are a consulting company. And uh, uh, we are proud to say that we don't have any hold any IP. Right. Uh, every company you see in the in the big data market, they have some IP. Uh, so uh, they say open source, but uh, they are either open API like Mapr or they are open cores, uh, open core. In our case, we don't hold any IP. Right. We are in the business of building clients' IPs. So our business is that we take the open source uh, uh, Hadoop and its ecosystem partners, and we use them to deliver value to the clients uh, to build the custom applications for them. So, so, so that's our business, and we think that the open source Hadoop itself is good enough to solve all of your big data problems, uh, as opposed to uh, finding the proprietary solutions here and there and mixing and matching them. Because you see the NoSQL space, like there are about maybe 100, 200, I, I don't even remember how many, how many uh, NoSQL databases yeah. are there now. Now, if you buy one of them, if you commit to one of them, what do you know that after two years whether they exist or not? Right, there, there are tons of those companies. Every day, a new NoSQL company props up. So what are some of the more interesting applications that you're helping clients with, that you've worked on, some of your favorites? Yes, yeah, so uh, there, and one, of, uh, one part is they're my, they my favorite, and second thing is that's where the market is uh, evolving is. So analytics is one thing, but the next generation of an analytics is, is going to be visualization. Right? So visualization, visualization has existed since, uh, uh, since uh, the dawn of civilization. But with the big data, I think visualization will evolve into something really big. Uh, so at present, there are a lot of applications which do a lot of visualization uh, for the traditional BI. And now they are going to move to work on the raw data of Hadoop. Datamir uh, uh, has done a good job there. But uh, I'm hoping and I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, within a year's time, you'll see some real good open source applications coming on that. We are doing a lot of interesting work with our clients on D3.js. So uh, uh, ClickView and the Datamere and all these companies, they are using D3.js, which is a JavaScript framework for visualization. And what we do is that we help our clients develop uh, custom applications, custom visualization apps using D3.js. So. If you want to ask you about, you made me think of Node.js, which has been very popular in the DevOps world. Um, you got Node, you got these real-time kind of trends going on, real-time data, pipelining. Um, can you talk about that trend in particular? Not necessarily Node.js, but like real-time data. You're seeing Spark um, becoming really popular, Storm, these technologies. Where does that all fit into the, kind of the, the, the MapReduce and the Yarn layers? Is it separated? Are they inter, inter, integrated? How does someone understand that trend? That, that's a good question. So as I said, one part which is going to remain there, that is that you have this data which is stored in a distributed way, in a very cost-effective way. That is not going away anywhere. And that's good, by the way. And, and, and that, that, that's, an, that's an awesome thing. I mean, if you uh, see the cost of storage in Hadoop, it's like many times less than the traditional uh, storage systems. So now uh, comes the question, how do you want to use it? So number one was that 
MapReduce, as I said, that was the traditional way of doing it. It has very high latency, uh, so it has its own challenges. And then uh, the companies came and they wanted to uh, work on the actual storage layer. Then Spark came and they said, you know what, let's do it in memory, right? Because storage also has its own latency when, when you are doing the disk I.O. So with Spark, they are doing it in memory. Now then uh, they developed Shark, they said, you know, that Hive, they are, so Hive works with MapReduce, they said, let's replace MapReduce with Spark. So everything else will remain same, right? You are still going to access Hive the same way as you were accessing. It's just that behind the scenes, the MapReduce has been replaced by uh, Spark. So, so, so that's why. So, in memory is the trend which is happening. And the interesting part is, if you see a typical uh, Hadoop slave node that has anything between 32 to uh, 48 GB of RAM, so that's a lot of RAM distributed across. You know, right? David just hit me. R Rishi's the professor. We have the dean of big data with Bill Schmarzo uh, <laughs> from AMC, a good friend of ours. He, we call him the dean of big data. Um, but you really have a good handle on some of the technical things. I really appreciate it. We call you the professor, the professor of big data. I only have uh, a ground up approach. I'm, I'm just an observer. Yeah. No, no, you're good. You're good. So I got I go to the next level. So let's just talk about now application developers because now you have all the scale, you have all the storage, you now have some real time integration. Where's the development market going? Because you know everyone right now is kind of, oh, I want some Hadoop developers. What does that really mean, I'm a Hadoop developer? It's a big data developer. We're trying to put our, uh, a frame around that. What does that mean to be a big data developer? And what are the things that think people need to know about what that means, or is it being defined now? Yeah, so we have an interesting perspective on being a consulting company because we see the actual uh, need and actual consulting needs in the market. So uh, I don't see a lot of need for MapReduce programmers, to be honest. I mean, I, I love MapReduce, uh, but I don't see a lot of uh, customers asking for MapReduce programmers as such. What they ask for is they need somebody good in Java, right, because Hadoop still is based on Java, and then they ask for uh, skills like Hive or Pig. Pig, I see uh, a lot of traction for the Pig, and down the line, uh, what's going to happen is this UI skills. I already see a pattern, but down the line, is going to become more and more apparent that the UI skills, the DT.js and other UI skills, they are going to be more and more popular. Because once you have data, I mean, the customers want to visualize that data. They want to get a story out of the data. Uh, so, and that can only happen when you've got very good visualization tools. Is there a programming language that you think is more relevant or has more traction relative to the big data, data science, and developers? Obviously, you have C, you know, uh, C++, and you know, have Objective-C. Is there other languages you're seeing emerging that are tools of choice for developers? So Java is going to be the de facto, I have done Java all my life, so I'm biased here. Well, we're older, yeah. older guys like us did Java. <laughs> so, a lot of the young guns might say, hey, Rishi, uh, you're old, you know, we'd like to, you know, you know I mean, I'm quite continue. <laughs> yeah, so, so, uh, so the cool language, is, Python is a, uh, is a cool language here that works very well with Java, uh, but repeating that, I think this new JavaScript framework, so I think they are going to be really big hit down the line, because everything else will become pretty much standardized. And, but where most of the value will come is that how you can view data in different ways. And, and that's where most of the visualization and infographics, as they call it, so, so, that's, so that's where I think the market is going Do to Do you act. think there's too much overhead in Java, or is that just overhyped? Overhead in terms of pro overhead programming language? Well, Java may have some overhead, but it's not as much as uh, uh, it's being criticized for. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's happening? Uh, for example, uh, uh, Cloudera Impala that's written in C++. But I think the biggest power of Impala is that it's uh, bypassing Yarn. It's directly going to the uh, to the slave node, which has the data node running, and that's where it's getting data from. So, yeah, C++ may be adding some value to it, and and I have all the, all the respect for C++ developers. Uh, uh, but I think the biggest thing is uh, the new architecture which they are using, where they are directly accessing the data rather than going through the whole uh, Hadoop compute layer. So what are some of the other things you might be tracking? You know, when you look at John, I was talking about the big, the big four, and now John's been talking about them for for a long time: cloud, mobile, social, big data. Everybody talks about those. But when you look at where the roots of those developments were, you know, cloud was Amazon. You know, big big data you could say was you know Google and what Yahoo has done. Mobile, I guess Google and Apple, Apple in particular, uh, and social, obviously, Facebook. But we watch what some of those, you, you know, what we sometimes call the hyperscale crowd, you know, the internet guys, the big, big, you know, giants are doing. They tend to go mainstream. You know, certainly you saw that with MapReduce and things like Big Table. Are you watching anything in particular that you see is coming out of those innovators? Um, or is this kind of a, you know, this big data theme, Hadoop, 
kind of a once in a two decade type of trend. Is, is, is there anything else you're watching that you're excited about that's coming down the pipe? Uh, we are way too focused on big data to focus on uh, other things uh, uh, which are happening. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of new work happening in the networking field. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, so the software defined networks and all SDN and all I think that's what's going to come. Uh, but the big data itself, I think, is once in a decade phenomena. What's happening with the mobile and social? That's uh, that's feeding data into big data. So a uh, couple of uh, uh, things which have happened which made uh, the whole big data perfect storm. Number one was this uh, mobile and social and a lot of other sources which have come up in the last five years. And then the cost of disk, uh, the SATA has become, has gone down like anything, mm. right? It, it, it has dropped like a rock, right? Now you can go to, go to any store and buy as much disk as you want at, uh, at no price. So, uh, so, and the third thing is the open source movement. Right, so the uh, Hadoop uh, uh, evolved, and a lot of other technologies uh, which came in the open source. So, so it was interesting that a problem evolved, but the solutions also uh, also evolved at the same time. So that way, I think the big data is going to be a huge uh, overarching phenomena which is going to exist, and mobile and social will also become part of it. That that's my take on it. So essentially, you're competing. I mean, we Jeff Kelly just quantified the big data market and the the. The, the biggest sector, you know, broadly is services. You know, if you break it down, hardware, software, and services. Service is the biggest. And that doesn't look like it's changing. It's been that way for, you know, the last several years and, and will likely stay that way. Um, and you see some big names, you know, the IBMs and then the Accentures will get into it, the Deloitte's, Ernie Young's, Capgemini. These are guys you presumably compete with, right? So how do you compete with those big whales? What's your, what's InfoObjects differentiator? So uh, in our case, uh, our biggest differentiator is the faster turnaround time. We are much more uh, agile than uh, the bigger companies. Uh, bigger companies uh, get into the bigger uh, uh, clients also, so that's where it changes that a bigger enterprise like Bank of America may prefer to go with Accenture. Mm -hmm. But SMBs, uh, they, they want more agility, they want more turnaround, they, they want someone they can call. Right, so so that's where most of our uh, most of our clients are in the SMBs. That's where it's easier for us to get in. Really, so, so you, you, a lot of the S's are, are jumping on big data. Can maybe can you describe some examples of what you're seeing for some of the SMBs? Uh, what what are they doing with big data? So what's happening with the big data is that SMBs forget about even even the very small startups. Now when they are designing their data model, now they are thinking, okay, this should go to MySQL or Postgres in some cases, and this should go to Hadoop. So from the very start, they are separating their OLTP and OLAP load. So what's making that is that the Hadoops, that the need for Hadoop is from the very start when the company is starting. And then in the SMBs, what's happening is that there's a lot of data which they were, uh, they were throwing away because they did, not, uh, they, they did not have somewhere to store it and they did not uh, even know that they can use that data. And with what's happening with the Hadoop is that now you can store that data and clickstream data. I mean, who would care about clickstream data 10 years back, right? right. But now the click clickstream data is there and all the web logs are there and the sensor data is there and all that kind of data. So they're storing all different various kind of uh, data and now they're trying to figure out what to do with it. And that's the region. One another thing which you're going to hear a lot uh, in next one year is about ROI. The skeptics will say, well, it's okay, there's all this Hadoop and big data, cool technologies, and I do have data, so what? Where is the money? So that's what's <laughs> going to happen down the line, uh, at least for a year. That can, and for any new technology, that confusion remains for some time. For Hadoop, this is the time, so in 2014, you will see a lot of people questioning it. They would say, yes, Hadoop is a great technology, right? I'm able to, access, uh, able to store all this data, but now what should I do with this data? Like where is the money? How should I drive my uh, my ROIs? How should I drive my KPIs? Right. So that's where, and that's where I'm saying that all these analytics tools, and all the visualization tools, and all the infographic tools, that's where uh, I see a lot of uh, uh, momentum building this year. 
Rishi, I want to ask you about um, a trend we were watching. We just get a demo. We did a demo just before you came on with Crowd Chat uh, application, which is a you know crowdsource people you know group conversation application, CrowdChat.net that we launched uh, in, in Beta One Preview. But people as data now, people are information themselves. So how does that factor into some of the, the conversations that you've seen on the business side when you talk to your customers? You know, people are connected with their cell phones. You have uh, obviously they're in databases as well. You, you seeing the role of people as data? Uh, it's a, a trend Dave and I are trying to get our arms around is what does that mean, people as data? So uh, people directly, uh, we because we work with enterprise customers, uh, we don't encounter, but what's happening is that the customers are interested that what people are talking to me about Twitter and the Facebook and other places. So that's where we see a lot of interest, that they want us to capture that data and then analyze that data and see where the trends are going. So, uh, so on these uh, social platforms, that's where we see directly uh, crowdsourcing i don't have a perspective on it we we never focus a lot on that uh, but i think there are a lot of companies which are doing a lot of interesting development uh, there including crowdfunding and all so uh, but i don't have a lot of perspective okay so what do you see let's talk about the hadoop marketplace as it starts to grow up you're starting to see trends here we've had other people on the cube earlier talking about hey this is the first show we've seen you know, people talking about po's and budgeting not just pocs like real planning uh, what's next for the market in, in this space here, the ones that are expanding? What do you see that next chapter of business meets the technology enhancements? What's the intersection on the business side with the technology? Uh, as I said, that analytics and visualization, I think that's going to be a big thing uh, for the next uh, two, two, three years. Uh, that's where it would head. Uh, coming back to the ROI's part, people want to see where the money is. and. Uh, for a services company, because the marketing departments, et cetera, they have much more money than the, the IT department. So it's like Hadoop infrastructure, I don't see a lot of money coming to the services business from there. Most of the companies, they already have their data center mm -hmm. set up. Yeah, so we have to work with their IT departments and all, but uh, do we add a lot of value there? No, because yeah, Hadoop uh, 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 infrastructure being there, Hadoop cluster being there, for them it's just another cluster. Uh, yeah. They already have uh, tons of clusters there uh, in their data centers, and it's just one more of them. So. My final question for you is, put a bumper sticker, summarize this big data SV event here, Strata Conference, what's happening this year in Silicon Valley that's more no the most notable for the folks out there who aren't here? So as compared to last year, I see less number of NoSQL companies, at least on the floor, right? So, so the database companies have mm -hmm. reduced, which has to happen. Uh, down to 200 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't counted, but I'm pretty sure. No. Yeah, I've been to 300, now it's 200. Uh, I see few services companies. So uh, I thought there would be many more pure services companies, but I only see less than five pure services companies. Uh, one reason for that could be that all the companies like Cloudera, they are also providing services. Mm. So one pattern uh, which is obvious there is that everybody is into services. Here, so yeah, so even if you create a, a new product, you open source it. Once you open source it, then all the IP there is gone. Then you have to again focus on services. So the good trend in this industry is that everybody to survive has to focus on uh, the good quality of customer support, customer turnaround and all. You cannot say that you have got the best and the greatest product in the world and let the customer figure it out to themselves, right? So that, so that customer uh, uh, support uh, would be a very a key that would uh, play a key role uh, in uh, generating revenue in the driving uh, the companies. Well, certainly, you guys are doing great work. Thanks for we'll calling the professor of big data because you're so knowledgeable. But also, more importantly, you're out in the trenches. You're helping folks take that journey across the chasm. I claim that the chasm's being crossed, but you can't have a keynote speech saying this the chasm's been crossed if. Uh, if otherwise, he wouldn't be speaking. So we're still crossing the chasm, so to speak. That's the keynote at Strata. Uh, Rishi, thanks for coming on theCUBE again. Uh, the market's exploding, a lot of great valuations, a lot of activity on the customer front, real proof of points uh, hitting, hitting, the, hitting the market. It's exciting, big data, SV. This is SiliconANGLE's theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.